Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. You're listening live to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. And right now, I'm uh, here with you today in Kauai Kapa, and I'm at the Dolphin Touch Wellness Center. And go check it out at dolphintouch.org. And you can read more about what this amazing center and the amazing people that uh, live here and that uh, what the services that they offer. It's incredible. Uh, the reason why I'm here in, in Kapa is because I'm, I'm uh, manifesting and, and living a dream of mine that is a milestone for me is being in Kauai. I knew that when, when I hit this part in my um, realization when this is an actual experience that's taking place um, that there is a, a greater level of freedom that that will have happened in my life in my ascension and part of living heaven on earth is um, realizing our mission realizing and living the life that we came here to live so even though the world is chaotic and there's uh, so many things that are falling apart at the same time we're also making choices each and every moment that take us deeper into the truth of our being and realizing what it is that we came here to to live be and do and we came here to experience great magnificent things and show how capable and how able we are to live the truth of our being. So this is this is such an exciting time for me. And when I originally, when I first came, which is a week ago, I came and you know I thought right away I was going to get busy doing my thing, and that's going to the beach and uh, doing all these fantastic, wonderful things, setting up my retreat for uh, for September when. Um, a different thing completely played out, and there was a huge flood going on in Kauai, major, 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 major things going on. And so many of us were called here at this time to assist with the balancing and the clearing and the purification of the land. And the clearing and the pur purification of the land, because we're responsible for our environments. Uh, and the land is, the, is modeling and showing you that your physical body is made up the same as the land is. And so part of all of us that were called here to uh, assist this land with clearing so that it can be returned to its sacred, rightful place is what we are grounding in into our physical bodies. And, if, if, um, and that's all part of living heaven on earth. And ironically, uh, the Dolphin Touch Wellness Center, of course, I didn't know this originally ahead of time, and I didn't even know I was going to be staying at the Dolphin Touch Wellness Center because I was actually staying somewhere else. This is what happens when you, uh, when you uh, move into relationship with life and um, allow the synchronistic, amazing experiences to unfold where you really have no control and you just show up in the moment. But ironically, um, this wellness center has uh, a card, Heaven on Earth. And so I'm here doing the Heaven on Earth show together with you and with my co-host, which I cannot wait to bring on in just a second. My roommate here in the next room, her name is Eve. So I just find it interesting I'm living heaven on earth. My roommate is Eve. We're here to balance and purify our, our land, our environment, taking ownership of it. 
so that we can be the calm waters that we, that we are because we're all made up of water. Right now, with everything that's going on on the planet, there is no greater time for us to get still and to get quiet and just to be that calm, still voice like water is. So my co-host today, uh, Charlene Hess, is back. She's uh, bringing us a series of how to connect deeper to your calling and also how to quiet the mind. And okay, you know, I found something. That was funny. That was Siri on my iPhone just started going off by itself. Um, so uh, Charlene is back. Welcome back to the show, Charlene. And I'm going to introduce you as we continue. Welcome back <laughs> to the show. Thank you, Cornelia. <clears throat> So Charlene, you are a magnificent uh, being of light and you do so many wonderful things. You have a great um, influence on the people that you, uh, that, that get to witness you, that get to experience you. And I'm so honored and delighted that you're bringing us this series. Like I said, there is no greater time than now to really get quiet and get still. And after years and years and years of you struggling with your own um, issues around getting quiet, getting the mind quiet, you develop a technique uh, that um, will assist, that can assist many people uh, into uh, having, taking med meditation to a deeper level and actually experiencing, having fun with um, when the monkey mind goes uh, berserk at first, when you first start. And I'm, I'm looking forward to um, getting to know the monkeys in today's show. The other thing that uh, I want to tell the listeners, if you haven't listened to the last show, we're going to put a link on today's YouTube load, and you're going to see the link of the last, last two shows that I did with Charlene, so you can easily access the previous ones because they're building upon this one. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're all doing. We're building heaven on earth. And what would heaven on earth be like if, we, if we're not... Um, assisting our minds to calm down and um, what Charlene is showing us she's showing us how to transcend those limiting beliefs and all of the things that are unconscious in the unconscious mind and to make everything conscious and really that is the way to live it's the way to live is to make everything conscious all the negative limiting beliefs and she's doing that with the technique that she developed so thank you Welcome back to the show, Charlene, and I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you so much, Cornelia. I'm very excited to be here also. Um, I am a little bit jealous of your beautiful tan, even though it's been raining in Kauai, it's, the sun has kissed you. <laughs> here in Washington State, it's still pretty gray and rainy, and uh, it's it's. Uh, I look forward to coming to be with you in September when you do your retreat, so... Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited about this topic of um, not just meditation, but the topic of really going in and getting to that place of having that deeper self-discovery. As you are able to listen to the link of the previous show where I talked about the process of meditation and meditation can be so many different things. You can meditate in so many ways. There isn't one way to do a meditation. There's not a right way or a wrong way. As long as you are taking time to get still and to be with yourself and to begin an internal investigation and dialogue, then you're going to be doing it right. And so what I specifically talked about in the last show I'll cover in this first segment is just to kind of recap, it is I learned a method of meditation through Kyle Cease where you just sit and be still and you allow whatever comes up to come up. And so previous times when I've done meditation and I've been taught about the monkey mind and to try and calm the monkey mind. And interestingly enough, as I'm sitting there and I'm in observance, I took the idea or the, the teaching that I learned through Cornelia and her work, um, which everything that we learn, we learn from somewhere else. And so it's like nothing's new under the sun. We all just learn it a different way and we get to share our spin on it. And so that's what I'm sharing is this is my spin on information that other people have come up with. I say that I didn't, you know, create or develop anything um, other than myself. And I'm just going to share with you how I did it. 
and hope that you can create your own method. And so that's really important that as I share this information, it's not that I'm telling you to do it my way or like Kyle's not telling me to do it his way. Cornelia's not telling me to do it her way. They're all just offering a way and then you find what works for you. And so a way that I found that works for me that I'm offering to you is during that time of calmness of stillness as you're sitting there and the monkey mind, you know, the, the multiple thoughts that happen simultaneously are going to, instead of judging them or trying to calm them or trying to make them go away, to just sit still and observe them, to become the observer and to hold space to lovingly, without judgment, look at what is coming up. And so last week, that's what we had, or last month, that's what we had talked about, about looking at the monkeys, getting to know the monkeys. And so what I really want to work on this week is taking a further aspect of that is so once you're there in meditation, once you've observed and you're seeing who all is showing up, I talked about it being like a kindergarten classroom where when I sit in my meditation, um, I feel like it's a kindergarten classroom initially because there's like all of the voices and all the thoughts that are coming up simultaneously and everybody's talking at once and nobody wants to raise their hand and I'm just, they're observing and then I like get everybody to calm down and I take attendance to say, okay, who's here? Who's got something to say? Who wants to speak? And we talked about how very often the voices that are the loudest, the ones that are most upfront in our mind, the one that's mostly running our subconscious are the ones that are loudest and they're the ones that are speaking first, talking over everybody. And the smaller parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that for whatever reason that we've kind of tucked down inside and we have hidden, um, keeping them safe are the ones that don't speak very often. And so for me in my meditation, my goal is I want to quiet down the loud ones that are taking over all the time and filter through to where I can get to that still quiet voice that's inside of me because it's a part of me that needs to be expressed. It's a part of me that is super valuable and has a lot to say. That's where I hold a lot of my wisdom is in that smaller place. And so that is the aspect of getting still, being calm. And so for me, I find doing that, I went through a very long time of meditating for an entire hour. And it took that long for me to be able to get to that place. And now I've been doing it long enough that I'm able to do it um, while I'm doing other things, while I'm doing dishes. I have a mindful movement meditation and then I'm able to begin that process. But it starts with getting still. You can't skip that part. I love this, Charlene. I love um, I love the recap, and we're going to go deeper into what's next. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with Charlene Hess, and we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. And I'm talking with my co-host, Charlene Hess, and we're talking about how to quiet the mind and get to know the monkeys. And what I really love about what Charlene is teaching us today is uh, the process of what she's doing is really we can use this process with anything to offer unconditional love and quiet the mind and let go of judgment. There's so much great wisdom and so much great medicine here that Charlene is offering everyone a free 30-minute coaching call. You can contact her at livingwholebeauty at charlenehess.com and in the subject line, write free coaching call. And for 30 minutes, and take advantage Take mm -hmm. advantage of this amazing opportunity. It doesn't matter what it is. She just opened up the gates and she said it doesn't specifically have to be towards meditation. She's offering her services uh, as a free way to assist you with whatever it is that you may be struggling with at this time. And I say take advantage of it. Living mm -hmm. Whole Beauty at Charlene. Living Whole. Living Whole. Living Whole at CharleneHess.com. Living Whole at CharleneHess.com and also follow Charlene on Facebook at Charlene Hess. Yes. And also go to her website at CharleneHess.com. Take it, take it away, Charlene. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Cornelia. And so we're talking about meditation. We're talking about 
when you are sitting in that stillness and when all of the thoughts start to come up simultaneously, you have all of the different thoughts and ideas, right? And so these, I'm calling these the monkeys. So the monkeys are there. They're all running around. It's like a three ring circus. And so the part about getting to know the monkeys is as you develop this practice of becoming the observer and sitting and you're looking and you're noticing, okay, there's this voice that keeps coming up. There's this voice that keeps coming up. Start to identify who like I call it name the monkeys. And so I've named the monkeys that are running around inside my head. And so what I have noticed for me personally is the the loudest monkey is the taskmaster. This is the one, this is the continuous thought of you should be doing fill in the blank. You should be doing anything but sitting still here, basically. <laughs> get out of here, go get your work done. <laughs> And then I notice as I kind of settle that one down, there's another part of me that is the the judge or the critic. You know, we all have that sort of inner critic of, are you doing it right? Are you even doing this meditation right? You, you know, you should probably be doing this instead and there should maybe be music going on or there should be, maybe you should be sitting more still. Maybe you're supposed to sit cross-legged or no, wait, you're supposed to have your feet planted on the floor so that you can get the energy of the ground. No, wait, you're supposed to, you're supposed to, you're supposed to, whatever it is, just keep, keep the critic of judging how you're doing this thing. They're the judge. I sometimes interchange the words. And then I have another part of me that is um, the super excited part of me that has continuous nonstop ideas, right? Just like, oh, we could do this. And then, oh, we could do this. And then there's this other idea over here. And so those are like the three loudest that I have that are going on all the time. And then I notice that if I sit long enough and I be still and I don't, I don't, I call it go down the rabbit trail. So when my taskmaster comes in and starts telling me what I should be doing, I could spend my whole meditation time thinking about my to-do list, right? That's, that's when I've chosen to go down the rabbit trail with the taskmaster. But if I just sit in observance and I go, oh, interesting, you're telling me my to-do list. Okay. And I don't follow it and I wait long enough, then another thought pops up and tries to take over. And so then that thought could be, um, oh, I have this really great idea. Maybe on your next show, you should do this. Or tomorrow when you're at work, there's this one hairstyle that I've been really thinking about. Or, oh, there's this really great movement that I want to teach at the gym. And I just go, oh, interesting. Okay. And I don't go down that rabbit trail. And then I notice, you know, then there's like that critic that keeps coming in and out and in and out about, you know, make sure you don't go down the rabbit trail or maybe you should go down the rabbit trail or don't you know you've got this thing that you're supposed to be doing and you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and I just keep sitting there and eventually they start settling down and being quiet so that then I can find that the next part of me that comes up is sort of my my little girl. And my little girl is super curious. She's curious and she's playful and she just wants to play. The part of me that's the really giddy, excited part that has lots of ideas is another aspect of my little girl. They're just myself at different ages. And then eventually at the very bottom is my heart. And that is the part of me, that that feeling part of me, that part where I just really connect and get into my body. And that part, there isn't even so much of a voice or words that come with it. It's this incredible stillness that washes over my body. I actually get a physical sensation of um, release wow. throughout my whole body when I get to that place of connecting to my heart. And when I'm finally at that place where I'm really still, I'm able to really connect with myself. And that's the part that I love hanging out with me in that aspect. And I've only been able to get to that place through complete stillness and silence. Um, the other part that I'm going to talk to you about, about getting to know the monkeys, it can be done in meditation, but it can also be done journaling after you're done with meditation. And so that's the part about who are these monkeys and where did they come from? So beginning the internal investigation of where did all of these thoughts originate? The part that works for you, the part that's really aiding you and helping you in your life. I don't know that they necessarily need investigation, but the parts of you that you feel like are stopping you or blocking you from reaching what it is that you want to reach or achieving what it is that you want to achieve, those are the ones that I feel like really do need some investigation. So for instance, as I realize this taskmaster is really annoying and 
it's this part of me that I become so frustrated because like you had mentioned earlier, Cornelia, I have really struggled in my life in the past of trying to get calm and still because I realized that it is totally the programming of my father in the way that I was raised, where I was raised to never sit still, to always be busy and to be always accomplishing something that whatever you do, make sure you're working hard. And, um, that has just been so ingrained and programmed in me so that when I do sit down or I sit still, I instantly, that that program starts to play and it starts running the show is what I say. It's like, it's running the show. And so outside of my meditation, I'm able to just really sit and work and journal and be like, okay, what, what is this? Where does it come from? How is it serving me? And so as I was able to identify that, okay, this is that aspect of your father. You're really hearing your father's voice. I have the opportunity once I've brought it into consciousness And I realize, okay, this isn't just a part of me. This is a part of me that I have attached to that I've brought with me from my past. Yes. And I need to identify what is serving me and what is not. So it's really important once you start to identify where these parts of you are to be able to realize that it's not something that you just get rid of. I can't just say, oh, I'm not going to have that anymore. That was my father. That's not me. I'm no longer going to have that that voice in my head. I'm no longer going to be the super busy taskmaster who's always trying to get something done, trying to get, you know, 13 things done in that last five minute time period that you have. Because the reality is, is it is a part of me. And to try and sever that is like cutting off your arm. It is a part of who I am. It did come from a place that I get to choose how much of it I want to keep by what is working for me and how much of it I want to, as I say, bless free, to bless it and to let it go, to not resist it, to not fight it, uh, to not judge it again, be the observer, be the space holder, be the lover. You don't need to judge it. I can just release it and let it go. Yeah, I love that. I love the part of um, acknowledging that it's all a part of you and that it's, it's all part of being in wholeness is to embrace all of the parts and what's serving you and what's not serving you and you choosing, oh, this is an old pattern. This is an old habit. This is an old way of being. But, you know, part of that doing energy is all part of the masculine. And we need that healthy masculine, that divine masculine that is going to do and take action and get things done. We needed to we needed to be in a balanced way so that it mm-hmm. he could be that that inner divine masculine can be in service to the inner feminine and can get things done. And exactly. what we're structuring right now is through our living heaven on earth and through our physical bodies is being able to bring that balance of the being and the doing. Because here's the thing, you know, we are quantum beings and we are able to get so much done on a quantum scale, but not from a place of judgment or from a place of should, but from a place of being purely devoted to uh, service and expressing and all of that. And so I love how you are um, showing us the negativity of the negative thoughts by quieting the mind and by um, honoring only to keep what serves us. Serves us. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, go to Living Whole at charlenehess.com mm-hmm. and you can also email Charlene for the, the free coaching Do you want to tell everybody again? Yeah, so free. I'm offering a 30 minutes free coaching session at livingwhole at charlenehess.com. Put in the subject title, my free coaching session or coaching session, whatever you'd like. And you can also go to my Facebook page, which is Charlene Hess, your empowerment coach, and as well as my website, charlenehess.com. And that's Charlene spelled C-H-A-R-L-E-E-N, hess.com. So we're going to go to break and I'll get into the next part of what it means to let go of the judgment when we come back. Thank you. Wonderful. Hi, I'm Tom Lombrezo and I'm here to tell you of my latest book, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. What's it all about? Well, can you imagine you're driving home like I did 17 years ago in my Jeep when an angel comes into my Jeep and tells me what to do. I did it. 
and it saved my life because a terrible accident ensued seconds later. My life changed dramatically since that day, full of spiritual experiences. I have documented those spiritual experiences in this book so that you can relive them yourself. Perhaps you're going through your own spiritual transformation. If there's any doubt in your mind that there are angels or messages you might get from clouds or that you are a spiritual being as well as a human being, you must buy this book. This book is full of photographs, 375 color photographs, over 278 pages. Of those, 155 uh, photographs are of clouds, clouds that will knock your socks off. So, how do you buy this book? Well, go to my website, www.whenangelstouch.com, whenangelstouch.com, and on the home page you'll see the, the photograph of the book, and it just says, buy it. So please buy it, it's $25, it's a good bargain for it, what you're getting. And if you need to contact me by email, tom at whenangelstouch.com, and you can see me on Facebook every day at When Angels Touch Facebook. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. And I'm with my co-host, Charlene Hess. I want everybody to go to my uh, website and sign up for my newsletter, corneliastephanie.com. Pop-up will come up, and it'll offer you the opportunity to sign up for my newsletter. Because in my newsletter, there's so many wonderful uh, energy tips and um, free tools all the things that we're offering here on the Living Your Heaven on Earth show with the amazing uh, guests and co-hosts that we bring on because we're all about giving you the tools that you need in order to build and live the world that you want to live in. And so we're talking about meditation and Charlene is uh, sharing with us a process that she developed that, that worked for her. And um, so here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Cornelia. I uh, love your newsletter. I'm really enjoying getting it every week. So I, I, I agree. I encourage you to sign up for Cornelia's newsletter as well. Um, and so, you know, something that you just talked about, you know, why you're doing the newsletter and why we're doing these shows and why do we need to sit in meditation and why do we need to go through all of this and why do we need to do this internal investigation? I just want to touch on that before I go into the next segment. It's because when you start to live consciously, when you get to that place to where you step outside of, I'll call it the matrix, and I know that that's a loaded term, but when you get to that place to where you are able to go inside and to look at who you are, look at the way that you act, the way that you behave, the way that you interact with the world, the, the thoughts that we have going on all the time happen because we are on automatic pilot. We're just like in go mode and we're programmed by our television. We're programmed by the environment that we lived in. We're programmed by the people that we hang out with. We're not just programmed by the way that our parents raised us and the family that we grew up in. We are being programmed constantly and that can be a really beautiful, wonderful thing or it can be not a wonderful thing. But you get to choose. And so it's. I'm so passionate about helping people to connect with themselves, to their body, to their heart, to their mind, to their thoughts, so that you get to choose the life that you have, so that you don't have to walk around asleep. You don't have to walk around living a life that you're going, whose life is this? I want to live the life that I want to create. And I'm just here to tell you that you can. And so what's the point of even having all this conversation and doing the radio shows and talking about meditation? It's because I want you to have a life that you are excited about. Like Cornelia talks about the whole name of her show is living heaven on earth. You can live heaven on earth right now, today. It's totally possible. And so doing this internal investigation, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's not fun and it's hard because depending on how attached you are to the way that you act and interact, depending on how attached you are to these certain monkeys that are playing in your head is going to determine if this work is hard or if this work is easy. And the thing that makes it hard or easy is your judgment. All conflict that we have, all of the conflict that we have 
is in between our ears. Great. That's so true. It's not about this thing is happening to me. It is about how am I responding to the thing that is happening to me? So talking about letting go of judgment. So I have this inner critic in me, this critic. That's also my father. My father did a number on me. Woo. <laughs> and I love him and bless him. But that was the person that I attached to when I was a child. I so desperately wanted to have love. I'm the youngest of 13 children and I was invisible and I did everything that I could to be visible, to get heard, to get noticed, to be seen. And so I attached to my father. And so everything that my father said, I worshiped and was like, this, this is it. This is law. This is what it is. And so I clung on to that. And a lot of it serves me well, because you know what? I am a badass warrior. I get a lot of shit done. I have a gazillion great, brilliant ideas. And, you know, I've got that Hess gene that I can make anything work. You give it to me, give me some duct tape and super glue. Pff, we got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a lot of aspects that I learned about being a Hess, about being raised by my, you know, my dogmatic, aggressive father that work really well. And there's a lot of ways that really suck and have not served me well because I have the ability to make it work, to make anything work. I have settled for things for me that aren't the best. I've decided that some point in my life, I realized I'm settling and I'm not going for what I want because, well, I can make anything work. And so that is a part of my life that I am shifting to where it's not about just going with the flow of my programming. I am making a conscious choice to change. How did I decide that? Because I sat still. I investigated my thoughts. I investigated my behavior of what am I doing on an ongoing basis? Why can't I just sit down and sit still and watch a whole movie all the way through? Why do I have to get up and do 16 things in the meantime? And that's where it's not serving me. If I'm trying to connect with my sweetheart and I want to sit on the couch and watch a movie, but I get up to do 16 things, then I am going against what it is that I want to do for me. My number one priority is connection. But if I'm constantly doing, then I can't connect. And so letting go of the judgment that I realize, okay, this is an aspect of my personality that I do that doesn't work for me. So I'm going to let it go. But there's aspects that it does work for me. And so I get to choose what I'm going to keep. And that is the part about doing that internal investigation and about letting go of the judgment if I just sit and I think, oh, it was so terrible, I have all this judgment because there's this aspect of me that I can't stand and I just, I did it again, I keep doing the thing that I don't want to do, what, how is that serving me in any way, shape, or form? It's not. It is keeping me stuck because now the critic is taking over. So I went from my critic is judging my taskmaster. And so it's just this vicious cycle. So getting still, looking at these aspects of where did it come from? Once you make the awareness of where it came from, you then get to choose, I am releasing this and letting it go. I am blessing it free. I'm letting it go. And I'm going to find all of the ways that this does serve me. And I'm going to keep those parts so that when I realize that I'm starting to do that behavior that I don't want to do, I can stop and go, hmm, is this serving me? Is this mine? Or is this my program? Mm, this is my program and I let that program grow. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to choose to do this instead. So the longer that you spend getting to know the different aspects of yourself, because they're all parts of who we are, the I am that's serving you in that moment, then the more tools and resources that you have to be able to draw on these other parts of your personality or these other aspects of who you are to be able to show up and do what you want to do. So the heart or the little girl in me has an opportunity to come up, but that is not going to happen if I don't stop, get still, do the meditation, get to know the monkeys, identify the monkeys, and then figure out what I'm going to keep and what's serving me and what doesn't. So there is a process. There is a work that needs to be done. It can't just, you can't just be an automatic pilot all the time and expect anything to change. I just absolutely love how you are putting all the pieces together, how you develop this, how you articulated this. And Charlene, this, I'm just, as your coach, letting you know right now, this needs to go in a book. This really does. 
it's it's really incredible. Uh, people will be able to sit and and read. They can they can watch this, but but practice it on a daily basis with steps on um, on doing this. I, I, you know that's that's what I'm getting. It's like wow, this is the, this is the perfect um, tool for so many things. It's not just meditation, but it's really mm -hmm. about how to live your life. And um, because you're you're talking about um, uh, releasing habits, you know, develop, looking at what what the programs are, collapsing timelines. You're talking about continuously keep making a new choice and keep embodying your new earth and move deeper into the truth of who you are and opening your heart, letting go of what's no longer serving you. So there, there's this is this is high spiritual teaching right here of what you're saying. And so I'm saying that this this is not just meditation, because really, what is meditation? Meditation is being awake and walking mm -hmm. meditative life where you're conscious, you're at peace, you are um, uh, in charge of your choices, in yes. charge of your, uh, how you're acting and reacting, like you said. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this conversation. Thank you. And, you know, it's really... <clears throat> like you said, it's not about meditation. Meditation is just a tool and it's not the only tool. There are many tools that work. And so if meditation isn't working for you, you know, call me, let's talk, let's discuss. I can give you so many ways to access this information and it doesn't have to suck. <laughs> it really doesn't. Um, releasing emotions is really freeing and it's wonderful and it, it it's so incredible to have that place of release and that let go and that that peace to wash over your body and so when you get to that place to where your internal dialogue is in alignment that's when you experience peace and it is totally possible to have that to catch that to have that place where you literally have inner peace. And so I'm offering this free 30 minute consultation um, because I just, you know, why am I, why am I giving away, you know, $60 to anybody that wants to call? Because it's, I'm so passionate about this, Cornelia. I really want to help people to live consciously, to wake up because we are here to experience joy. We really are. And when I came to that realization and left my old life and started to create a new life, the, sh the shift was so incredible that I want everybody to experience that freedom. I want everybody to experience what it's like to be able to write your own script. And so I want to help you. And so call me, <laughs> message me at living whole at Charlene uh, put in the subject title, uh, my free session and, you know, let's talk and I can help you find a way that's going to work for you to help you begin this investigation, this internal investigation, you know, to, to make it fun, to getting to know the monkeys, giving you all the trip, tick, the techniques and tips of how to come to that place. So it's all about, it's all about the tools and we're offering mm -hmm. incredible tools, um, free and there's free gifts and all kinds of things. You can also go to corneliastephanie.com and you can look um, all the way on the bottom, scroll all the way down and you're going to see all the, the tips on emotional processing because mm -hmm. in order to really be at peace, you have to learn how to grieve. And grieving is part of our humanity, being able to walk in our shadow and being able to walk in our divinity at the same time, because we're so amazing. We're so capable. We're so awesome. And that is the new story. And so yes. we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Charlene Hess. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her 
one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now. And even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. I now am a certified empowerment coach, and I got certified through her program, and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority, in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I hope you're loving this show as much as I am, and it's hard to believe that this hour has almost gone by. We've got just about 10 minutes left, and so we want to wrap up. We've been talking about meditation and letting go of what no longer serves us, and there's so much juiciness in this call today and my co-host Charlene Hess is just an amazing speaker, an amazing uh, facilitator and articulating the new consciousness as she's channeling this information through so brilliantly. She's here to help you, she's here to support you and so you can contact her for a free coaching call. And so Charlene, you had a couple things to say during the break that you wanted to mention about uh, the young people today mm -hmm. and specifically talking about your daughter. And mm -hmm. so, um, share with us what, <laughs> what, what, how she's blowing your mind. Yeah. So, um, when you are in a place to where you begin to live consciously and when you are, what I say, what the way that I say it is everything is up for review. So all of my thoughts, all of my actions, all of my behaviors are constantly up for review. As I'm always asking myself the question, is this serving me? How does this serve me? Is this for my highest good? And uh, sometimes it can be exhausting. Uh, and sometimes depending on how much resistance I am in. And so when I am in resistance, when there is that part of me, that aspect, that, that, that ego part of me that just wants to survive, but not thrive, right? So there's this ego part of ourselves that it's our, our ego's job is to survive and survival is only, we can only survive by doing what we already know. And so to do something new is a threat to our ego. And so in order to thrive, we have to do something new. And so we have that place sometimes of that, that push and pull. And so when that part of our ego, which is also our uninvestigated self, our programming, um, you know, our safety mechanism, which we don't want to let the ego go. We certainly need our ego because it is there for a reason and we need it, but it doesn't need to run the show. And so as you go through and you start to become conscious and as you start to review everything that you're doing and you're coming from a place to where you're living from your conscious awareness, when the ego comes in or when the old pattern comes in, which it's going to, it's going to throughout your whole life. It is a program that's been installed. You can, you know, delete it a hundred times, but it's, there's, it's still there. You just don't have to act from it. 
But when it does come up, I want to give you a technique. And this is Cornelia's technique of um, the emotional release technique that I've taken a spin on. And it is, okay, so when you're in that place and you realize, oh, I'm in that place that there's this critic that's coming up and I'm starting to notice these words are coming out of my mouth and I don't want to, but they just started to flow is you just become aware, you observe it, you stop and you verbally say, I am releasing this and letting it go. This no longer serves me. Erase, delete, goodbye. When you actually verbally say it, your brain hears it and it actually goes away. It really, really works. It's the same with emotional processing. When you identify the emotion, you feel it and then you release it and you claim the opposite. So same thing. So I notice this behavior comes up and I say, okay, I, um, let me give you an example. So let's say, so currently right now I'm not eating sugar. And there's like, you know, there's a little gremlin inside of me that really wants to have the sugar. And so when I go to reach for the sugar, even though I know it doesn't serve me, I know I've made a conscious choice not to have it, but there's that thing in me that's like, oh, and I have it in my hands and I'm going to eat it. I just say, oh, I'm not eating sugar right now. This is not going to serve me. So I'm letting it go. I no longer, I'm not doing this right now. I am choosing to drink a glass of water instead. And so when I verbally say it out loud, it reinforces my positive behavior. And that's just a physical example, but you can do it with your thoughts as well. Um, I did the sugar one because I know that, you know, with dieting is a really, uh, uh, people have a lot of awareness around that. And so it's easy to use that as an example. And so that is that technique is to just claim how you want to be, claim your way of being that is serving you and verbally say, I am releasing this behavior or this pattern that no longer serves me, I let it go. Bless it free. Claim the way that you want to be. And so what Cornelia was talking about, what I was talking about, break that I did want to touch on in these last few minutes is um, I am blown away by how awake and conscious our young people are, the ones that are choosing to not be programmed by their environment. And so my daughter is one of these people. She's getting ready to go to South America by herself. She's 19 years old. She's going to turn 20 in Peru. <laughs> and she just, you know, bought a one-way ticket and she's going to South America for three months. And when we were talking about this, and there is that part of me, the mom part of me, the, the, the old part of me that's going, you're crazy. Do you realize how dangerous it is? Do you even know where you're going to stay and what you're going to do? And here she is, my 19-year-old daughter telling me, mom, this is my soul journey. I can't tell you verbally what I'm going to do with my intellect because this trip isn't about my intellect. This is my trip that I've been called to since I was 14 years old. And I knew that I was going to go spend, you know, three months in the Amazon rainforest. And when she said that, it just like clicked in my brain, like exactly. And she says, mom, you're the one that taught this to me. You're the one that taught me that I can do anything. You're the one that taught me to not worry that if I'm in alignment with myself, that I'm going to be able to manifest the place to stay, the money that I need. And so it's really interesting to be in that place where it is coming back at me the way that what I taught her, what I told her when I was acting in my consciousness of what I know in my heart and I intentionally raised her with my, with my awareness. And so she took it on. And when people meet my daughter, she's absolutely amazing. They will, they're like, wow, like you're so, you're so mature. You're so like aware. You're so conscious. How is that? And she'll say, my mother intentionally programmed me. <laughs> and I heard her tell her friend that the other day. And I was like, wow, um, actually I did. And, and she got that. And so it's a really exciting experience to know that when I'm going back and forth, because I do, I go back and forth from acting from consciousness and acting from my, my unconscious state, you know, my, my pre-programmed behavior. And so to have that kind of come back at me is really a wonderful reaffirming place to know that I truly in my heart am 100% comfortable and confident with my, my, my 19 year old daughter buying a one-way ticket and going to South America for three months without a concrete plan. I because love I know it. her, yes. I know her and I yes. know where she's coming from because she's acting, she's awake. She's yeah. aware. She's grounded she knows her heart. And when she's connected to herself, unstoppable. And yeah. so can you be, so yeah. can we all be. Yeah. And, and I remember, um, when, um, when you brought Seja to the retreat to quite a few of the retreats that we've done together, 
um, she she would come up, come up to me after during the break and she would say, uh, I am the way that I am because you helped my mom. And so it's just all a circle of how we're going it around is. supporting each other. I have an upcoming wholeness practitioner course. Charlene is a practitioner. She became certified through my coaching program, through my wholeness practitioner program. And if you go to CorneliaStephanie.com, it's upcoming and you can see uh, become a wholeness practitioner and mm -hmm. learn how to navigate uh, and practice living in wholeness every single day. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be with you again today, Charlene. It's amazing Thank how you. fast time goes by. Everybody sign on and take take advantage of all the free stuff that we're offering. And let's do this. We, can, we came here to do great things. And together, mm -hmm. we are stronger uh, than, than we know. Yes, we came here to live in joy and step into yourself and express the joy that you are here to experience. And so it is. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you, everybody, for listening.